American. The Americans are not going to have a solution in Syria without Russians, and the Russians also without the Americans. And both of them are against any form of Islamist extremism. So if both of them agree that they are going to fight together the Islamist extremism, I do not think that anybody else fighting against Bashar al-Assad is going to be an Islamist extremist because Russia and America are against it. Well, in terms of that, Webster Griffin Tarpley, Russia has said that uh, uh, U.S.'s recognition to place all its bets on the coalition is an armed victory. Uh, and, of course, any reactions you had to our gentleman there from Beirut on his statements? Well, certainly Russia and many other countries across the world have reason to fear the fact that the United States and NATO have now managed to turn Libya over to al-Qaeda death squads. That's what rules the benghazi derna tobruk corridor, as was stated uh, before. The Libyan Islamic Fighting Group rules the roost in Cyrenaica, in Libya. And uh, now, in, unfortunately, in certain parts of Syria, probably northern Syria, we've also got uh, Islamic Emirates, uh, we've got the Muslim Brotherhood controlled by Saudi Arabia, of course, uh, and therefore we've got Chechen fighters certainly in, in Syria, we've got m more than half of these death squads are foreign fighters, so people in, in Russia and elsewhere have to be very, very concerned about this. I would also point out the, the so-called Syrian National Coalition. Uh, up until about a month ago, France and other countries were saying the only legitimate representative is the Syrian National Council. Now they've been dumped, and now we've got the coalition created in Qatar a, a couple of weeks ago. And in the middle of that, we've got this, this guy, Khatib. Who is Khatib? He's an executive of Royal Dutch Shell. He's a lobbyist for one of the biggest oil multinationals. And his family, you can get pictures of his grandfather, working hand-in-hand uh, hand with the French generals in the 1930s who ran the French colonial administration in Syria. And he was trained also at the Dutch Cultural Institute in Damascus. And as was mentioned, he's also the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, he wants this uh, hardline benighted policy. So uh, th there's really nothing indigenous about this. It's, it's simply a, uh, a trick uh, by Obama and by the by, by Western uh, uh, European powers. But again, this cannot go on forever, this contradiction which you started the program with, right? On the one side, al-Nusra are al-Qaeda terrorists. They're one of the principal components of this thing that the United States now says it should take over and become the legitimate government. This, this is uh, untenable, and I think, again, we're in the second term of Obama, and you can look around for scandals brewing, my horizon here in Washington, this is the biggest scandal brewing here, and I don't know how long this illusion can be kept up. Well, you talk about contradictions, Eric Dreitzer. I'm kind of confused. Maybe you could uh, shed light on this. When we talk about arms and how the U.S. has been uh, alleged to provide uh, financing, et cetera, uh, who's providing the arms? And does it really matter? Because, well, based on, again, well-documented uh, facts by different uh, uh, print and media organizations, uh, uh, both Saudi Arabia and Qatar, providing the arms with the help of Turkey. And of course, the CIA has set up uh, uh, a camp in southern Turkey coordinating the distribution of arms. Well, uh, I, I'll respond to that, but first I wanted to respond to the gentleman in Beirut. Uh, it's important to note that this is a deliberate distortion by many people who are spreading this type of propaganda. Nobody said that the entire opposition is made up of al-Qaeda. In fact, the National Coordinating Councils and many of the other grassroots elements that have been inside of Syria, they don't recognize the National Coalition, and they certainly have stood up publicly and been against any form of intervention, particularly from those individuals individuals and groups that they see as not legitimate Syrians. So to say that, uh, that I or anybody else was making the argument that the entire opposition is al-Qaeda is a deliberate distortion. Now as to the question of bringing in weapons, uh, this is something that we've seen over the course of many months. We want to remember back to the New York Times article that was documenting very clearly and honestly the fact that the CIA, using surrogates from the Muslim Brotherhood of Syria, were funneling weapons in through Turkey into Syria. So 
uh, that is one channel that we want to look at. Of course, the Qataris and the Saudis were seen as uh, the financiers, those who maybe weren't necessarily providing the muscle, but were providing the financing for those weapons. Uh, Israel is also certainly involved. We had this report recently from Reuters that Israel has sent in uh, special teams into the country to, uh, well, what they claim is observe the movement of chemical weapons, though I think anybody who understands the situation would see that as utterly transparent and preposterous. Uh, so there are many different elements, and the, the funneling in of weapons through the base in Adana, as was mentioned, which is, again, this is the Interlik base. This is the NATO base. They should be seen as one and the same to a large extent. And uh, so we have a complex network, a web of relations between the United States as well as its proxy states in the Gulf and the various elements around Syria that are really conspiring to bring in the weapons and to destroy Syria. So again, to say that anybody uh, from the Syrian coalition or anywhere else is representative of the Syrian people is to say that their oppressors and the terrorists are representing the people, which is, of course, an outrage. And Judd uh, Marikata, when we look at the statements made by uh, U.S. President Barack Obama, tell me if you don't see a notion of uh, uh, reservedness or, or, or some kind of doubt when he says, Obama, that is, quote, to make sure that this new national coalition, they organize themselves effectively that they are representative of all parties and they commit themselves to a political transition. Why would he say to make sure that they organize themselves effectively as if he doubts that that A has indeed taken place or even will take place? <clears throat> this is precisely in response to the two gentlemen that are participating with us here. The U.S. government does not want to get involved into any uh, Al-Qaeda type organization or sending weapons to the wrong people. They don't want another Afghanistan situation with the Taliban fighting the Russians again. The U.S. government has been very clear from the beginning, and this is why they were the last people to recognize the Syrian coalition after France, Great Britain, and the European Union two days ago. They just did it yesterday, just before the meeting in uh, Morocco. Uh, basically, as far as the U.S. government, and they said, the U.S. government said they're going to put al-Nusra uh, on the list of terrorist organization. So they were very clear about what they want to do. There are people who are terrorists and there are people who are not. The Muslim Brotherhood, contrary to what the gentleman in Washington is saying, the Muslim Brotherhood is not a terrorist organization. It's a legally elected uh, political party in Egypt. It is governing in Turkey. It is not a terrorist organization. Okay. So one has to be clear about things. All right. Webster Griffin Tarpley, the Muslim Brotherhood has said uh, that, uh, let's see here, uh, that the uh, uh, U.S. was wrong in blacklisting uh, Al Nusra Front as a terrorist organization, yes. a decision that was wrong and hurried. So if our guest says uh, they're not a terrorist organization yet, they support the Al Nusra Front. My deduction is that they support this terrorist organizations. So by association, they're just as guilty. In their fight, no, in their fight against uh, the regime. And I find that as a fighter against the regime, they are very effective. Are they a terrorist organization or not, Al Nusra Front? Al Nusra, yes, they are. They are a jihadist. Okay. Well, certainly, uh, Go ahead, Nusra, we're we're from, from the U.S. State they Department. are sharing let's, a common let's goal. Let's not be, be more, more guarded in our judgment than the U.S. State Department. They are. El Nusra is a, a group of 29 death squads, uh, largely uh, infiltrated, permeated by Al-Qaeda. As far as the Muslim Brotherhood, of course, this is something a little bit different. This is a, a, a mass-based organization generally controlled by Saudi Arabia, and it's uh, oligarchical interests, it's businessmen, wealthy doctors, lawyers, and other people like this who use an ideology to get power. And we can see in, in Egypt what they've done is, is make a deal with the International Monetary Fund, which is one of the main root causes of what's going on there now. But I would say for, for Syria, it's getting clearer and clearer. The, the choice you have is between the Assad government, with whatever its faults, and absolute chaos, because notice, the al-Nusra people, the 29 death squads, refused to be a part of the new military command which the U.S. and NATO created in, in Turkey this past weekend. So what that sets up is, if Assad is driven out, you will then have a final reckoning between the al-Nusra death squads and 
the rest of the, of the so-called free Syrian army. I the kind of agree. Armageddon of the death squads uh, on the horizon. Now, that is something that nobody can want. We're going to have to end it there. We're fresh out of time. Thank you so much. Founder, stop, imperialism.com. Eric Dreitzer from New York. We had political analyst, Jihad Murakata from Beirut. Thank you for your comments. And uh, author and historian, Webster Griffin Tarpley from Washington. Thank you for your statements. And thank you for watching another edition of the Press TV News Analysis. From me, Kovat Havway, and the entire team in the capital, Tehran. It's goodbye.